Hey guys, and welcome to Code with Stein. In this Django crash course, you will learn how to build a blog using Django. I'm going to start with the very basic Django, so even beginners should be able to follow along. The course will be split into nine different parts, and I will publish two parts per week for the next month. I will base the blog on this template, so it will look very awesome when it's finished. As you can see here, you see the menu, and it is based on Bulma. Here we get the search, some subpages, and then the posts. The blog will have all the functionality you expect from a blog, like categories, comments, search, and similar. But first of all, what is Django? Django is a framework based on Python for building websites and web applications. It was made to make it possible to build stuff very quickly and powerful. But now it's time to start installing the software we need. So I open up Visual Studio Code, which is a very good editor I always recommend. I created one folder called Crash Blog, which, which will be the name of this project. And down here I have a terminal. And this is where all the commands will be executed. So first of all, I'm going to create a new virtual environment. If you don't have this installed on your computer, you can install it by saying pip install virtual env and hit enter. A virtual environment is like an isolated place on your computer designed for your project. So when you create a new virtual environment and activate it, every time you install something new, it will just be installed for that environment. That makes it easy to maintain packages and make it easy to deploy to a server later and similar. So this is something I always recommend using. You don't have to do it, but it's very nice to do it. You can also use docker and similar. Great. So now that we have virtual environment installed, we can create a new one by saying virtual env under the name crash blog underscore env. And then if we're in ls now, you'll see that I have a new folder here called crash blog env. And this contains a bin folder with many scripts and similar. And now that we have created it, we can activate it by saying source crash blog env bin slash activate. And now you can see here we got the new text here in front of my username crash blog env. That means that it's activated. So if I now run pip, it will install packages just for this environment. And if I wanted to deactivate this, I just write deactivate. And now the text here is gone. But let's activate it again so we can install Django. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Great. And then to install Django here, we just say pip install Django. This will install the newest stable version that Django has, which currently is 3.2.4. Don't worry if yours is slightly newer or something similar like that. Just make sure that it's 3.2 or newer. Great, so now we actually have Django installed here. So then we can create a new project by saying Django-admin start project crash blog and hit enter. So now you can see up here that we got one more folder called crash blog. And in here we have a file called manage.py. This is a file for running administrative tasks like creating super users for the admin interface, initializing the database, updating the database, and similar. You don't have to think too much about the contents here because you're not going to change this anyway. It's just a file that you should know what actually do. And inside a crash blog folder we got one more crash blog folder which is kind of like the main folder for the project. Here we have an init.py file, which is just a file telling Django to treat this, uh, this folder here as a package. And then you have ASGI and WSGI. These are entry points for the web server later. You don't have to think about them yet. I will come back to them when we deploy the project to a live server. And then you have settings.py, which is global configuration for the project. As you can see here, you for example set installed apps, if it's debug, and middleware, where the templates are located, and what the database to use, and similar. You also set the language code, the time zone, 
and similar. And then you also have the urls.py. This is kind of like a table of contents for all the pages on your blog or your project. There are one page included default by Django, which is the admin interface. So you can try to start the web server so you can go into this and see what it looks like. But first I want to create a new super user. So if I run LS now, you will see that I'm not inside the Django project. So I need to go into that CD crash blog. And then first of all, you need to initialize the database. You do this by saying Python manage.py migrate. As you can see here now, a little script was run and we got one more file here called db.sqlite and this is SQLite 3 database which you will use for when we are do just doing this in development. Hope it's not too overwhelming with all the information about the different files. We will come back to all of these many times so it will, so it will be much easier to understand what to actually do later. But now that we have a database, we can create a super user by saying python Manage py create super user create a username and then a password great super user created successfully so then we can run the development server by saying python manage.py run server this will start a local development server with this address. This is not the server to use in production, but it's very handy to have when you just do development on our computer. Then we can go to a browser and open up a new tab and paste this address there. And here you can see that the installation worked successfully. Perfect. So now Django is running here. Nice. And then to log into the admin interface, just go to slash admin. Now you can log in with the user we just created. So you can see here now we can uh, visit the site which just will take us back here. Or we can change the password for the current user. And we can see the other users that could be here. Later when we start with the blog, we will get for example posts here, comments, categories and similar. So we actually have an interface we can work with the content, very simple here. And all this comes built in with Django. And that was it for the first part of this series. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please click like below. And if you have any questions about the code, feel free to leave a comment below as well. See you in the next video.